Gary Schwartz. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, and staff. Um, it's being here to speak about things that are divide our community are very difficult. Um, we've been through this before on some other issues. This petition that was read references one of those that occurred in 2010, and that was the Project Labor Agreement. There was hope that there would be some coming back together, and here we are again with something else. Um, what occurred, obviously, with the, with the principal at Gabrielino caused a lot of uproar, and no more clear than what happened on January 9th when the, Gabriel, the gym at Jefferson was packed. I was one of the people who <coughs> spoke on behalf of the principal, and believed that, as a board, you all did a good thing, which was to say, we're going to let this all lie and let an experienced administrator investigate and determine what is the appropriate thing with the principal, as I suspect happens with others who have contracts up. But, Rather than take hasty action, there was there was reason thought. About it. When I was a little guy, um, I lived in a place where they had pro football, and there used to be a penalty when a bunch of defensive players went on after the whistle. It's called piling on. <laughs> piling on. This petition is an example of piling on. The petition references the Project Labor Agreement. The Project Labor Agreement vote occurred in November of 2009, 2010. I remember it very well. If that was really the issue, then where was the petition in January of 2010, 2011? Where was that petition? The reality is the two people that the most venom is owed that that aimed that for this issue with the principal were the two people who were against the Project Labor Agreement, who acted to try and get the best Project Labor Agreement, and spoke and voted against it. Denise was one of those. So uh, I think that we look at one side, we don't look at both sides. I could go into a lot in, in terms of what Denise does in terms of representing the community um, as a member of the school board. A lot of you and may not be aware of all those things because she goes to things representing the school board that we don't all go to. I think I'm involved in stuff, Hi. and she goes to things that I have no idea how she gets to. And so I think we need to recognize that there's more than one side to this, and we need to be more united than divided. You go, Korea. And uh, next year I'll have one at, in high school, one in middle school, and one in elementary school. <clears throat> I've also been actively involved in the district through participating in the facilities oversight committee and previously in the budget advisory committee. <clears throat> this is to say that I've had some interactions and have dealt with current as well as prior board members. Um, and it, 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 it behooves everyone to understand the type of commitment that all of the board members made and with the well intentions and all of it is with well intentions. Um, I stand here today to speak in support of Denise Menchaca, our prior board president. And to me, <clears throat> it seems like uh, just yesterday when just about everyone here was standing up <clears throat> for electing or re-electing Denise to the board. Uh, <clears throat> what has changed since then? Uh, she has not left, left the board or the district standing and, uh, for a better job or for better opportunity with the LA Community uh, College District, right? She's still a person of strong conviction and leadership. 
She's still a person willing to take a stand and follow through with her promises and not vacate her position for other aspirations. She's still a leader to push initiatives in the best interest of our kids, which I have seen personally, and the school district and holds an unbiased opinion on decisions made by the board, not by Denise and Chapel. She has three kids in the district and one grad that recently graduated from the district. Um, so it, it, it's hard to believe that uh, a person with that kind of vested interest in the district uh, would do anything intentionally to, uh, to damage the district. She immerses herself in the community to hear the students and parents' concerns so that she can help <clears throat> on how to best address those concerns. <coughs> she cares about what happens to the kids outside of campus because, because she knows that it will inevitably make its way onto campus. The contrast to this would be one administrative response when, the, when they were asked about an incident where a student died in a, of, of a drug overdose. The administrator's response was that we do not concern ourselves over that because it didn't happen on campus. I have worked with Denise in the past in a professional and a volunteer setting and can tell you that she is very capable of breaking things down in their simple, to their simplest forms in order to make informed decisions. And she does this, <clears throat> but, she does, but she is but one vote on a board where a unanimous vote is required in order to pass an action. I firmly believe and suspect that everyone else in, the, in this room also believes that the board makes, it, makes decisions as a majority and no individual has the authority or is allowed to act alone. <clears throat> Not to mention the litigious society we live in and where the attorneys need to advise on whether decisions made by the board or within the board's authority. Let's concludes the uh, public comment. And I move to a, uh, a special presentation. There's a presentation by Deborah Fong, as she said, <coughs> regarding the Asian Pacific Community Fund Verizon Scholarship Opportunity. Hey, Ralph. That's good. Asian and Pacific Islander nonprofits serving the diverse needs of Asian and Pacific Islanders throughout Los Angeles County. Our mission is to transform lives by building healthier community communities, developing leaders, creating a stronger voice, and providing a foundation for a brighter tomorrow. The Asian Pacific Community Fund and our 29 affiliates serve 250,000 people annually with programs and services in a total of 27 Asian languages plus English and Spanish. And so here, I'm here today to tell you about our Verizon Scholarship Program. We are in our second year doing this scholarship program, and this year we are offering $25,000 in scholarships in two cycles. We are in our first cycle, which entails a $15,000, 15 $1,000 scholarship awards to high school seniors who are living in California, Oregon, or Washington, or plan to go to a four-year accredited college in the fall in one of these states. The additional criteria include uh, a minimum cumulative GPA unweighted 3.0, and also uh, planning to major in math, engineering, or technical science. So we are currently accepting applications. The application is online at APCF.org. And the deadline is March 30th. And so later this year, we will have a second cycle, which will be open for second year college students. Oh. Math, engineering, or a technical science. or plan to attend college in the fall in one of those states. So it's 15 in two states. 
and yes. it doesn't have to be on each. It's a thousand each. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, on okay. students per state. No, 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 no. So you can take it full. <laughs> they are judged on uh, academics, leadership, community service, and then their essays.